Friends Day, and she's still there now. So pray that uh, Earlene will heal up and she can get her life back. You don't know her, but it's a friend of Nancy. Just remember that. That'll be enough. <coughs> Let's sing our opening chorus. Appreciate you being with us so much at 1136 Broadway Street in Elmira, New York. No matter where you are in the world, you're with us in spirit. Thank you for being here, Pastor Ron. Isn't it nice to see Pastor Ron? Yes. Amen. Uh, any other announcements this morning besides what Michelle is going to say? Tuesday, 10 a.m. Yeah, Ladies Bible Study and Crisis Care Kids at the Old Minister Offering. Crisis care kits are an ongoing thing. Plenty of those are needed. And as you saw when you first entered, there is a place for you to put your soaps and your shampoos and all those items that uh, Shelva gave you a list for last week. So bring them in. We want to get those ready for delivery soon. Anything else? Board meeting is Wednesday at 10 o'clock for the board members. All right, let's, uh, let's sing our next him then, such love, such wondrous love. <clears throat>
Our scripture reading this morning is out of John chapter 15, and I'll be reading it out of the uh, J.B. Phillips translation. I'll read verses 1 through 8. I am the real vine. My father is the vine dresser. He removes any of my branches which are not bearing fruit, and he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit to increase its yield. Now you have already been pruned by my words. You must go on growing in me, and I will grow in you. For just as the branch cannot bear any fruit unless it shares the life of the vine, so you can produce nothing unless you go on growing in me. I am the vine itself, you are the branches. It is the man who shares my life and whose life I share who proves fruitful. For the plain fact is that apart from me, you can do nothing at all. The man who does not share my life is like a branch that is broken off and withers away. He becomes just like the dry sticks that men pick up and use for firewood. But if you live your life in me, and my words live in your hearts. You can ask for whatever you like, and it will come true for you. This is how my Father will be glorified in your becoming fruitful and being my disciples. Amen. Amen. Well, we could just say this morning, depend on Jesus. That's what the scripture's saying. <laughs> depend on him. That probably wouldn't be good enough for us. Mm. Uh, have you ever known the agony of not doing the right thing? I have. Yeah. I, think, I see there's one other person and this person up here. Okay, so there's three of us. We know the agony of not doing the right thing. Causes a lot of anxiety, doesn't it? Can everyone hear me okay? I don't think your mic is. Yeah. Well, we've got to do something. How about now? Hey, there you go. All right. Amazing. So have you ever known the agony of not doing the right thing? Sure. I think all of us probably have, you know. Have you ever thought, I ought to do, you know, this or that, only to just simply forget about it. It just kind of slips our mind. Have you ever uh, promised yourself that you'll never uh, say something only to blurt it out several times afterwards? <laughs> yes. Have you ever told someone, maybe even God you told this to, I'll never do that again. But for some unknown reason, you do it again. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Have you ever thought, well, I, I can't really change. I'll always act like this, I'll always be like this. It'll never, things will never change, you know. Now I know that we've probably never fallen into the trap of uh, comparing ourselves to someone else <laughs> along the way. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought it, at least, at least I'm not like that neighbor down the street. <laughs> <laughs> you ever consoled yourself about uh, your failures and shortcomings uh, by making a list of the, uh, the obvious huge sins of your parents or your friends or your family and just simply blame it on them. But see, in, in the middle of comparing yourself to others, have you ever thrown up your hands in despair and just said, well, really, I'm, I'm really no good. I've made that my mind up at all. I'm not good at anything. I'm not good. And if we've ever experienced any of these feelings, we've asked this question. What's my problem? Mm. What's wrong? 
And I propose to you this, that left to ourselves, we cannot make all the changes we need to make. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat that, because it's probably important for us this morning. Left to ourselves, we cannot make all the changes that we need to make. Mm -hmm. See, on our own, we can't keep doing uh, all that we should do. Let's face it. Our lives are beyond our own control. We can't control our lives. Mm -hmm. We really can't. We have no control over it. Without help, we usually will fail to do the right thing. Now, if you've gone that far with my thinking, you'll probably get something out of the message. But if you think that you can do everything on your own, you probably won't get anything out of this message whatsoever. You'll remain just right where you are. Things will never change. Because up to this point, there has to be some kind of admission that we're nothing without him. We, we, we just can't do it. We, we remain helpless in ourselves to do the things that we know we have to do. We can't do the right things ourselves. Right. But see, we're not alone because, because God's people have not changed in thousands of years. There are people before us that have done the same thing and thought the same thing, that we can do it on our own, but later on they find out that they can't. It's really interesting because the Jewish prophets describe the people of their time as grapevines gone wild. <laughs> grapevines, in other words, no, uh, you know, the pruning, they didn't want to be pruned, they didn't want to go through pain, they wanted life to be all peace and happiness and, and, and joy, <laughs> and, they, and they didn't want to go through any pain or anxiety, but we have to. Those of us that have been alive hardly at all, we understand that there are some pains that we have to experience in life. Mm -hmm. We can't deny them. They're real. But when we go through these pains, we're always better off later on. Mm. It's okay. It's okay to go through anxiety and pain and different things. Instead of producing the fruit of righteousness, attitude actions, the people in the Old Testament especially produced hypocrisy, greed, greeds of all kind, different kinds, and, and uh, listen to the prophet's words in Isaiah chapter 5 and verses 1 and 2. He says, I will sing for the one I, uh, I love a song about his vineyard. He, he loved one, my loved one, had a vineyard in a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower tower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. And then Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21 says, I have planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt, wild mind? Jesus came with a new message about God's great mind. And you've listened to Shelter's scriptures. And what he was trying to say is, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He is the husband. You're already clean. Remain in me, I'll remain in you. Mm -hmm. Simple. It's a simple thing. You remain in me, I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Separate ourselves from the vine, we won't bear fruit. Must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. It really speaks to us. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man remains in me and I am him, he'll bear much fruit. And that doesn't simply mean winning souls for Christ. It means you'll bear fruit in your own life. Mm -hmm. The most important part is this, apart from me, mm -hmm. 
you can do nothing. That's right. That's all he had to do, is keep saying over and over again, listen, these are my disciples, apart from me, Jesus speaking, you can do nothing. Mm. You think you can, mm -hmm. but you can't. You can't leave me out of the picture. <laughs> it's an impossibility. You leave me out, I'm gone, I'll leave you alone. I'm gentleman enough not to bother you. We'll see how it works out for you. Mm. Then he says towards the end, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Mm -hmm. And there's, <laughs> there's just so many lessons to be learned from the grapevine. See, grapevines would rather produce shoots and leaves and grapes. If they're less than themselves, they will keep growing. We've got some wild grapevines uh, out back. Uh, they do produce some fruit. They're, you have to squint to see them. Mm -hmm. They're all seed. They're sour. There's really nothing to them. Well, they haven't been pruned. They look lush and green. The flowers are great. Or, I mean, the leaves are great. They could be used for all great decorations. Mm -hmm. We all tend to seek looking good to others. More than really changing. Mm -hmm. Grapevines uh, must be pruned and, and they have to be pruned radically. The gardener must be merciless. Mm. Well, I haven't, I haven't trimmed these apple trees in the back for two years. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> there was one apple <laughs> on one tree <laughs> way in the back. The squirrel decided he got his eye on it, he decided he was going to take care of that. But see, that apple tree wasn't pruned. Mm -hmm. But it's hilarious, really, because when I pruned I had to take it like halfway down and just cut it off, right straight off. And it looked like, wow, there's nothing left of the tree. But there were some years when we had some nice apples. Mm -hmm. But the apple tree didn't get pruned. Um, God wants to shut off, you know, cut off all these uh, showy areas in our lives. I, I, I'm convinced of that. Branches with no fruit must be removed so that they don't draw nutrients away from the grapes. Mm. Huh. And we all do, whether we realize it or not, have attitudes and actions that will never make us more like Jesus. They have to go. Mm -hmm. Fruitful branches must be pruned back to produce even more growth grapes. It's a, it's a known fact. It, it has to happen. It's painful, but it has to happen. Uh, one of the interesting things about Christianity is that we don't ever need to quit growing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's never a day in our life as a Christian that we could say, okay, had enough, mm -hmm. uh, this is enough, I'm right where I should be, this is, this is it's, it's all good for me. Uh, we'll always need to cut out old ways of thinking and acting and replace them with Jesus' thoughts and his actions. Now, the interesting part of it is, in my own personal life, I find this out. Fear and anxiety, especially being anxious, will, will cut me off quicker from the vine than anything. I don't know about you, but if there's fear or if there's like a lot of anxiety that builds up, I, I'm just not as connected as I should be. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that I know is missing. Mm -hmm. And I can go on for weeks and even days and not even well, maybe even ignore it. But, but the fact is that we, we have this thing built into us that fear can be so real in our lives that it just stops everything up. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can be so anxious and concerned about things that it keeps sleep from us. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it just disconnects us completely. This message from uh, Jesus gives us hope, though. It really does. It's a simple message. It gives us hope. Uh, God doesn't want to leave us on our own. It's not his intention. He, he wants us to, to just, just live.